What is Darwinism? I see creationists using this word all the time. Some of them seem unable to say evolution. They always call it Darwinism instead. What's that about? Why do creationists insist on calling it Darwinism if scientists don't call it that? What does Darwinism even mean? There are some words that can mean different things in different contexts. Take, for example, the word Coke. Are we talking about Coca-Cola, cocaine, or a solid combustible fuel made out of coal? Or probably a better example in this case would be the word passion, which can either refer to an emotion or enthusiasm or a particular tale of execution. Likewise, Darwinism can mean different things to different authors depending on when and where they lived. Initially, Darwinism was used to contrast Lamarckism, another earlier explanation of evolution that wouldn't have qualified as a theory today. Lamarck's idea was that if giraffes stretched their necks to reach the highest leaves, then their kids would be born with longer necks somehow. And likewise, if you worked out in the gym every day, then your kids would be born stronger, and so on. While most applications of Lamarckism are now known to be laughably unrealistic, this notion had a lot of appeal with people who really liked the idea of controlling their own destinies. Those same people did not like the fact that people are dealt a particular hand of cards, being the DNA you're born with, maybe with a random wild joker mutation, and that you had to play the hand you're dealt, because that meant they weren't actually in control, and that their situation wasn't divinely designed to make them special. Evolution is an unfeeling process, there's no doubt about that. The universe doesn't care about anyone or anything. In nearly four billion years of life on this planet, there's no hint of justice, as myriad generations of animals lived without our level of intelligence to appreciate the world around them, and they were wiped out in repeated waves of extinction events. The fossil record shows that nature isn't nice, never has been. Nature is red in tooth and claw, as Darwin himself lamented, and this is a fact that would still be true even if the creationists were right. Evolution is an aspect of population mechanics where the individual hardly matters at all, but that's not a reason to reject its truth, because it is verifiably true. In fact, it is often said that the truth hurts, and same with life, which is often cruel, harsh, and unfair. Yet most people would accept that life is real, no matter how tough or callous it can be. This understanding of Darwinism as an unthinking, unfeeling, and seemingly unfair process governed by heredity and random mutation really bothered the very people who are most commonly accused of being Darwinists, that being the Nazis and the Communists. Hitler was a Christian creationist who ordered all of Darwin's books to be burnt. While Stalin sentenced Darwinian scientists to be gulagged or executed, Stalin only permitted scientists to promote his own brand of Lamarckism. So neither Hitler nor Stalin were Darwinists in any sense, even though they didn't agree with each other either. They were enemies after all. And this apathy for individual life was most charitably described in the Tao Te Ching, which says that nature acts without intent and so cannot be said to be benevolent nor malevolent to anything. But certain people paraphrase that malevolently. Take, for example, the classical liberal Herbert Spencer. It was Spencer, not Darwin who invented the phrase, survival of the fittest. He and others of his time took the cruel apathy of an unthinking natural process of population mechanics amid environmental dynamics and applied it to politics with the notion that humans should be left subject to natural selection just like any other animal, discarded, their needs ignored, as if the underprivileged did not warrant compassion if they could not compete. Although this contrasted sharply with what Darwin said about people himself, Spencer's idea was called social Darwinism and was subtly promoted by political conservatives, imperialists, and white supremacists. Spencer himself was an anti-statist economist credited with a concept designed to justify denying social welfare to others. Creationists frequently confuse Darwinism with social Darwinism and social Darwinism with socialism, not understanding anything about anything as if socialism means that people are just animals with no inherent human rights, as if Darwinism implies or allows that the elder generation of people could be weeded out by the younger, stronger generation. That is how some creationists have described what they think Darwinism is. They think that learning about evolution somehow instills a callous disregard for our fellow men, which of course is not the case, and anyone who's read Darwin's collective works would see that he believed in no part of that. Darwin instead embraced humanism. Humanism is a mostly atheist perspective emphasizing the needs and value and goodness of humanity. It's unfortunate that an idea so violently opposed to Darwin's own values should be named after him, especially since Spencer also espoused Lamarckism and apparently believed that both concepts were true or equally plausible. 
But the fact that nature is naturally careless is precisely the reason we should not abandon our brethren to the elements. I heard a Christian announce in a seminary that atheist countries teach social Darwinism. And by atheist countries, he meant countries like India that aren't atheist at all, but that are supposed to be secular and are really deeply steeped in and corrupted by religion. When he says they teach social Darwinism, he means that capitalist countries teach their students to be commercially competitive. And somehow he thinks that underperforming classmates should be motivated to murder the valedictorian in order to advance their own grade on a curve. If he thinks that competing in academia or in the free market is that stupidly cruel or inhumane, then what would he think about other socioeconomic systems like communism, where the advertised intent is to take care of everyone and commercial competition shouldn't be taught at all? Nothing he believes is true, but if it was, what would his solution be? The idea that Darwinism is contrasted with Lamarckism as one of two explanations for evolution is still held by some senior British scholars, but otherwise we just call it evolution now, especially in America, where most folks have never heard of Lamarck because his wasn't even a working theory. Yet, American creationists are more likely to refer to evolution as Darwinism and will not correct that even if addressed. Why is that? Two reasons. One, they don't want to accept that evolution is a body of knowledge that has been steadily building for the last 160 years or so. They don't want to restrict it to the ideas of one man limited to and by the 19th century, as if his ideas were never vindicated by subsequent experiments or discoveries, which of course we know they were, repeatedly, consistently, conclusively. Two, by calling it Darwinism, they can cast the illusion that it's just another religious belief like their own, as if science is just as bad as religion, or as if science is a religion. But it's also the fallacy of projection. Because when they say that evolution is just a religious belief, they implicitly admit that religious beliefs are not evidently true and that they're only held on faith in lieu of evidence. If American scientists refer to Darwinism at all, they mean only the 19th century postulations of the man himself, being the mechanisms of natural and sexual selection. Because for the last few decades, Darwin's theory of natural selection has been taught alongside Mendel's theory of genetics as the modern synthesis of Mendelo-Darwinian evolution, also known as Neo-Darwinism. And more recently, additional considerations like genetic drift, endosymbiosis, and cladistic monophyly have been integrated into what is now called the extended evolutionary synthesis. It isn't any form of Darwinism anymore at all. Most of the new generation of scientists, even in the UK, now refer to it only as evolution. Creationism is not and does not like the truth. It doesn't care about accuracy or accountability. It depends entirely on frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies. So when believers refer to evolution as Darwinism, it is both pejorative and a deliberate attempt at deception, trying to create an illusion of confusion, turning everything around as if science is based on faith or faith is based on evidence. It's a fallacy of false equivalence. They will not admit the truth about the real difference between religion and science. They can't because they know that would blow down the imaginary house of cards they like to make believe in.